what's most important as we begin to think about this concept of personalized medicine is beginning to integrate and understand how do we look at key signaling networks occurring in individual patients or the cancer of individual patients with the range of new therapies that can be used to target those specific alterations that are occurring in that individual patient. And that is essentially the essence of targeted therapy. Let me give you an example from our work about how we've begun to think about that. And then I'd like to tell you a little bit about where we're going with some of that work. So in glioblastoma, which is the cancer that we study, it's unfortunately the most common primary brain cancer of adults. And as everybody knows, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a difficult disease. Um, the traditional approaches towards that have been to use radiation and chemotherapy. Over the last couple of years, there have been some wonderful new results that suggest that the molecular composition of these tumors matters. There's been work that suggested that the methylation status of a particular gene that's involved in DNA repair, that in fact has an important bearing on therapy. Uh, work from groups in Europe have shown in fact that patients whose tumors don't have activity of this DNA repair pathway do better when they're treated with radiation and a particular type of chemotherapy. And the important lesson there is that, in fact, the molecular composition matters. Our work has taken a slightly different angle. That is, we've been interested in asking, could we target some of the very signals that drive the cancer, and could we figure out which patients are likely to benefit from that type of targeting? So we've been very interested in a gene or a protein called the epidermal growth factor receptor. And this, to us, is a very interesting target. Many people have heard about the HER2 new breast cancer story and how an antibody called Herceptin is now being used in women with breast cancer uh, to treat um, them and has had a dramatic effect on their survival and their response to therapy, certainly in the fraction that have an alteration or an increased amount of this HER2 new breast cancer protein. The epidermal growth factor receptor is actually a very close cousin and has many of the same properties. And in glioblastoma patients, the epidermal growth factor receptor is commonly amplified or overexpressed or mutated. So one would think that is potentially a very important molecular target. When clinical trials have occurred with drugs that specifically target that receptor, and these are small molecule inhibitors, pills that a patient can take that are designed to specifically target the activity of that receptor, they find that about 10 to 15 percent of patients have a, a good therapeutic response to these drugs. But that raises a, a major challenge. That is, if it, affect, if it is favorable for 10 to 15 percent of patients, how do you figure out who those 10 to 15 percent of patients are? More directly, if you have one of these tumors, do you make the decision that it's worth taking the risk that 85 percent likelihood it won't work for you, but knowing that if you happen to be one of the ones that it would work for, it would be well worth taking that therapy. So we set out to use molecular biology to ask, could we determine what, in fact, was happening inside the cells that would make a patient respond or not respond to these therapies? And to make a long story short and the work of a lot of individuals short, what we found both in patients and in model systems, that is cells in which we could manipulate all of the proteins, was that there were two key components that actually determined whether or not a patient would respond to these EGF receptor inhibitors. One of these was called the mutant EGF receptor protein called EGFRV3, which is something that occurs in about 25% of glioblastoma patients. And that mutant seemed to sensitize uh, the tumor cells to this EGF receptor inhibition. That is, because it activated this pathway, cells were particularly sensitive to inhibition of that pathway. And a second component called the P10 tumor suppressor protein that was also critical for determining response. This P10 tumor suppressor protein is essentially the brakes on the system. That is, it takes the signal that comes from the outside of the cell through this receptor and it puts the brakes on that signal. And one can imagine that when the brakes are broken, as often happens in glioblastoma, that signal gets conveyed constitutively or persistently even when the brakes ought to be on. And what we found is when the the tumor cells are missing that protein, the P10 protein, essentially the brakes are gone and the drug that ought to shut off the pathway can't shut off the pathway. And that actually makes a lot of sense 
but it raised, I think, an important proof of principle that if we understand something about what's happening in the molecular networks of the cancers within individual patients, we can help optimize the therapy for such patients. And that's really the concept of personalized medicine. And this is only one example. Many more are, are heading into the clinic. And in fact, as we've begun to see with other types of cancer, there's a whole tool bag or armamentarium of new types of molecularly targeted therapies that are going to be available and that are likely to be very useful for brain tumor patients.